Thought I'd do a little quick video today on some conductive inks. Got a whole range of different kind of pens here. I've got uh, a set of conductive inks. I've got uh, a bit of conductive paint. I've got some standard uh, metallic type pens here, just not supposed to be conductive. A couple of uh, dry wipe marker or something there, a permanent marker, a pencil and a metal pen. Going to do some samples of these and see whether we can get conductivity from these. Uh, work out their resistance per meter, ohms per meter, um, and just see how that goes really. These things, the blue pens, need quite a lot of shaking. Once you've got them warmed up a bit and they're going, you can actually hear a little ball bearing inside moving up and down. You can't hear that moving up and down then you're you know not mixing it well enough or the maybe the inks are too cold and they're too stiff and you just want to warm them up to maybe body temperature as these things rely on some little pigments suspended in some sort of glue or paint if you imagine that this is your paint on top of a surface the paint itself isn't conductive but there are some little kind of i don't know pigments molecules uh, crystals flakes i don't know what they put in all of these Certainly with the silver one, there should be little flakes of silver suspended in that. And you really need these little flakes of silver touching each other so that they can create an electrical path through them. If they're not well suspended in this ink or paint, then you're not going to get a complete circuit there or not very good circuit. So really stress, you need to mix these things up really well. Don't know about this one. It's much thicker. I guess you can... This one really doesn't have much instructions on it. It does say that it's really up to 12 volts only. Um, used within six months of opening. It says it works on paper, plastics, textiles. Don't know what these ones. Probably much more to read on the back of here. Don't get it on your skin. Oh, it causes cancer. Very toxic to aquatic aquatic life. It does say that this stuff should be air cured or can be air cured for maximum conductivity. Sorry, not air cured, heated up to 121. So yeah, it recommends air curing and heating it up will actually maximize the conductive property. Okay, so I'll start with some of this. Now I've used this one before and it's quite thick, almost like gloopy. So I'll put some on, spread it out there, and then make a track across this paper. And it's quite difficult to get a nice smooth line. I've actually been doing a lot of work in the bathroom recently, and actually getting the silicone around the bath is quite difficult. If you kind of touch it once and go back and try and smooth it again, I only generally kind of ruin it. So I think that's about fairly consistent. I've probably made that a bit too thick now. Leave that one there. Doesn't say how long it takes to dry, but I won't do any measurements on it until it's actually not tacky. So this one is the nickel. Oh no, that ruined that, didn't it? Mm, it'll be fine. Right, so this is the nickel. Give it a little squeeze and push the nib down to get it going. Gonna not make this one quite as thick. I'm just gonna uh, not too parallel either. Okay. There's quite a lot of it on there. Could obviously try a thinner amount. But I want to give them a good chance of working. Oh, this one is a much kind of thinner, lighter grade ink. So it doesn't say what metal on this one. It's got a number, CW2200STP. I must mention that one of these smells quite strong, so it's quite fumey. Might be this one actually. Gonna have to go open the window, let some air in. It's 
quite thin that one. Probably argue. I'm actually going to go along here again. Push a bit more. I'll make this one a bit bigger because it's quite a thin ink. Okay, if you think this looks bad, why don't I get on the paintbrush? Okay. I must say that nickel one is really quite dark. This one's much more silver, so I'd say this one is probably silver conductive. Right, how do I go about getting hold of this then? Don't want to spill this one everywhere. Come on. Oh, got it all over my hand. And probably the worst place you could take this paint from at the top because I'd imagine all the good stuff sunk to the bottom. Paint. Yeah, it feels quite quite watery this one. And it really spreads out. I'm doing quite well, but you can literally see it soaking into the paper, this one. It's getting thinner and the brush is getting harder to use. It's going to be quite difficult to get a thin bead of that on there. I'm going to layer it up because you can almost see the paper appearing through this ink. So I'd imagine any kind of metal particles in here are extremely small. Okay. It's gone everywhere down here. No, I don't know, I'm gonna get that on. Okay, it just pushes on. Okay, well, we'll leave those for a bit. Don't know how long. I'll come back in about 10 minutes and see how they're getting on. While they are drying, I will have a go at some of these pens here. These are not supposed to be conductive inks. I've got a few metallic inks and I've got a few non-metallic inks here as well. Um, as they're not supposed to be conductive, I've decided to do a much simplified experiment where I've got a distance of one centimetre here. Let's uh, try this one. I won't mention the brands and if any of them are particularly surprising, I will announce that towards the end. So let's do a similar type thing. I'll build this up a bit more. Again, it's quite thin. Uh, so that's a gold coloured ink there. What else have we got? We've got the same manufacturer's silver ink. I'd imagine they would have to probably use some metal particles to make these gold and silver. I might be completely wrong, but recently watching about um, food products with silver and gold in them, and they do actually put silver and gold in the food, so I wonder if the food itself is conductive. It's got a silver ballpoint pen here. That comes out quite nicely. There must be very small particles to pass the ballpoint in here. Let's actually fill that right up. Quite difficult to do this from a distance. Right, um, I've also got a pencil. It's probably quite a high grade, as in quite a hard lead. Looks like someone's decided to do some hoovering while I'm recording. And then, completely for no reason at all, I've got oh, a really bad fine line marker. That one's probably due for the bin, and it's time. 
wonder how they recycle these things. Okay. And then a slim dry wipe. Obviously, I'm not expecting anything from that. And then I've got a, not a metallic ink, but a metallic pen. And this is some standard, what is it? Black ballpoint ink. Put that on there. And again, absolutely no reason for that to be conductive at all. But sometimes some of the greatest results from experiments were completely unexpected or even a result that they saw that they weren't actually testing for. Okay, there we go. I actually have my trusty cocktail stick here, and I'm just going to see whether these inks are... Now this one's surprisingly quite tacky. I was expecting it just to flow out of there, but no, it's quite tacky. Um, let's check this end over here. Yeah, there's still quite a lot of fluid on top of there. What about this one? Uh, cocktail sticks a bit ruined. Oh, I've got the one that says don't get it on your skin all over my skin now. Mm, yeah, I'd be saying that one's dry really. Probably shouldn't have gone across there, but I'll measure before and after that. And yeah, that the paint itself is certainly dry. Don't know if it's cured, but it's uh, dry to the touch. What about the other inks? My plan was to use one of these little CRL analyzers. I think it would have given us smaller readings than my trusty multimeter, probably giving us some milliohm readings. But we're going to have to stick with the standard multimeter here. Fortunately, the screen's taken a bit of a abuse, a bit of spray paint on there. It's also probably needing a battery replacement. Let's see if we can get readable. Let's see. Yeah, we can read that, I think. Right, put this into resistance. There we go. And it has a light somewhere, but it does seem to go off very rapidly, so not much point in that. I'm actually going to start with reading this conductive paint here as it seems to be dry. We'll stick oh, one meter in there, one there, if we can do that. And the light's gone off already. But we can see it says 8.1. 8.1 what? 8.1 ohms. Let me see if I can get a better connection on that. Come back to that one after a bit longer. So, oh, eight ohms. I'm gonna write that one down. Right, so the next one is this standard tip silver stuff. Measure that one, and oh, that one's pretty good as well. Um, just push down here a bit harder. Um, oh, and it's dropping, so I think it might even be dropping as it's drying. 8.4, 8.3, so about 8 ohms as well. I'm going to put 8.3 at the moment. Right, this one is the nickel, and I think this is still wet. Give it a go while it's still wet anyway. We'll... And that one is... It's dropping as we're watching. So it's either dropping because there's a current flowing through it, and that's uh, making the resistance drop. It's only a small current, but it still must be having an effect to the particles in that. And it could be because it's still drying, and they're kind of knitting together still but at the moment it's 13.6k and falling so i'm going to write 13k there and we'll come back to that one and then the one up the top which is this kind of black jellified ink it looks it is still a bit wet in in some places in other places it's kind of dry we'll see if i can get a connection here and i will do it when it's dry because obviously it could be completely different and the reading we're getting is, it is a K, yeah, 200 
and 27 kilo ohms. Very wet still that one, so... Oh, I've forgotten that already, 227. And it's 210 now, so... And there we go. Give that a while longer and see what happens. Let's see if I can get to these ones back here now. Should also include the internal resistance of the multimeter and you see it's coming up at about 0 0.3 of an ohm. That's just how it is. Checked all the connections, that seems to be as good as I can get. Okay. I think if you're taking current readings, that would give you quite a different reading. So this is the first non-conductive ink, uh, but metallic ink anyway. And there is nothing there, no resistivity, or conductivity rather, lots of resistiv resistivity. Nope, nothing from that one. Let's go down to the next one. Nothing from that one. They're all nothing, just check the probes are still functioning. Yes, they are. What about the next one? Oh, there is something from this one. This one is oh, 100 and 120, 118 ohms. That's nice. So, oh, that's pencil. 118K. Check the standard biro, should be absolutely nothing. Good. Next one. Oh, that wasn't a biro, so that was the dry liner. This one's biro down here. Well, stabbed into the, through the paper with that one. So keen to get a, a reading. Okay, so I'll give that a, a while longer, come back once this one seems completely dry and that one seems completely dry and I'll do the test again. It's been around half an hour now. The black conductive paint here, it seems pretty dry in the thinner areas. There's a blob here that I kind of repaired a bit of the track. It's still a bit tacky, but it's not actually running. It's just kind of a bit soft still. And this one, this one is, seems dry to the touch. Yeah, it definitely feels dry to the touch. These ones are already dry. So we'll go quickly over these again, uh, get some more resistance readings. Let's go with this one that was eight ohms to start with. Hmm. So that one's settled down, we're getting about 7 ohms, 7.1, plus the 0 0.3 in the meter, but I mean minus that, but we'll say 7 ohms. The next one, oh, that one's settled down, this one's settled down to about 6.4, that is 6.4 ohms, increasing up slightly. So I'll move these probes about it changes. I'll say it's 6.3 I saw there. Sounds good. 6.3, 6.4 go on this. There we go. What about this one, the nickel conductive? Mm, what is that? That is... Oh, it's going all over the place. Let's try and get a better connection. 116 ohms that one settled down to. Is that definitely ohms? Yep, it is ohms. Seems more difficult to get a good connection to this one, especially on paper. 118 ohms I'm going to go for. So that one definitely has improved with time. So as it's dried, it's got better. It's tucked under there. And then let's try this black stuff. And I'm reading a reading of 4.1 kilo. It's still a bit tacky. 1.4 K. So 
and this is kind of like the first test and then the second test so you can see it's drastically improved if it's not dry you're not going to get a good good circuit down there at all uh, this one as it's dried has got much better it's been in total probably about an hour since I laid these out as they say on some of these paints and stuff they're actually heat treating them or baking them will improve their conductivity again uh, I think that was on this this silver pen here or this nickel one so we could try doing that I have only done the test on paper this time so that'd be a separate thing altogether and then again I don't think there's going to be any different stories over here but we'll try these I'm actually going to bring the probes together to see if I can get any conductivity in this stuff so give it a little surface scratch so this gold ink here in the standard kind of pen nothing the silver in this one no nothing the silver kind of biro type let's have a look at this no nope, not getting anything from that the pencil obviously won't have dried but no, that's not bad what am i getting now about a hundred is about the same really as i bring it into different places on this lead here or graphite i don't know what it is changes drastically but that's still up there in the killer ohm range about 118 in the same place so it's good to see that all of these conductive um, solutions here are much more conductive than pencil obviously this is a very short length and if i had done a 10 centimeter length it would be much higher the best solutions i've got here is this particular silver conductive ink what does it say it says conducting silver argent conductor there's no other writing on it now if i have to think about where i got this one from i can't actually remember it's been in the drawer for a couple of years now it could have been bought in a blister pack in maplins or it could have been bought online can't remember but it's the first time i've actually used it i bought it for something and didn't end up using it and actually these solutions i bought those before christmas I was going to make some LED Christmas cards for the family, but I never actually got around to that, so that might be for next time. I started off with this one, and I couldn't actually get it to uh, conduct enough current to light LEDs up. So then I ended up with these solutions, but never actually got around to it. So it'll be interesting, perhaps, to load these with some current and see how much current we can pass through them. What I've done now is connected up my bench supply. I've set it to about 10 volts, uh, 100 milliamps. I'll just check the current flow through here. So 10 times 100 milliamps, what's that going to be? A maximum of about one watt that I could pass through here. So it's going to be a little bit fiddly. I'll switch this probe, this clip over to here, connect to the probe. I'm actually going to just try and make a connection and see whether we can pass this 100 milliamps down there, 110 milliamps down there. So connecting that up, to this black ink we can see that we're able to pass 3.79 milliamps down here let's try this one we could have just used Ohm's law to figure this out really but yeah we're able to pass the 108 milliamps down there completely fine even uh that seems strange maybe yeah passing current down here kind of actually promotes it to start conducting let's try this one Oh, that's strange. I'm not now getting anything. Oh, there we go. I've got some connection. Uh, I had to kind of rub past the top surface with this to get a connection, but it's passing 108 milliamps fine. Let's try this 108 milliamps fine. Let's crank up the power a bit. What shall I crank the power up to? We'll crank the power up to um, one amp. And that would be able to dissipate 10 watts down it if that goes well. Don't think there'll be enough energy to cause any of these to catch fire. Again, let's try this black conductive paint. 
we're able at at 10 volts with a potential of one amp we're able to push 4.25 milliamps down there it's increasing slightly so it looks like as it conducts it uh, becomes more conductive or the connections are getting better either end one or the other try this one we're able to pass 120 can i get a better connection than that yeah it looks like sometimes you get a better connection and then it's almost like the power is possibly burning out your connection let's try down here a bit so yeah we're passing about 120 milliamps down there okay now let's try this one oh. so you start short out oh there we go my power supply is screaming it's overloading so it's passing more than one amp down there fine and it'd be interesting to look with a thermal camera and actually yes yeah, it all with a thermal camera and see if that tracks warming up let's try this one and again overloaded working really well so what shall we chuck more down there let's put two amps i'm just shorting this power straight across this piece of conductive ink so it's essentially acting a bit like a well it is a resistor or a heater element one or the other i'm going to try the black stuff again to see if we can kind of push through now i'll give this stuff stuff a scratch and give it a good old i could bring these right down together and we're passing about 25 milliamps but to be fair it's still a bit tacky but it's not seeming to le uh, you know not ultra conductive it's definitely conductive let's try this one again yeah so when you kind of make a contact with this one bearing in mind it's quite a thin ink although i thought i got quite a lot down it seems to have soaked away you kind of sometimes make a good connection but then passing the current down there actually reduces the connection after a bit or kind of i'm not sure what goes on there let's bring this closer together dissipate all that energy into this bit and as you can see yes it was conducting oh now it's smoking so we're passing and oh, now it's smoked it's conducting less i hope you saw that a bit of smoke come off that oh it smells bad oh look at that smoke come off and it stinks whoa it's actually on fire did you see that it actually lit up oh so this stuff kind of burns i'm going to get a close-up on that oh it stinks I did just read up that nickel fumes are apparently not very good for you so i'm hoping that most of the fumes coming off this is burnt paper and not actually nickel uh, fumes going into me and possibly causing cancer but as you can see when i dissipate 20 watts over this small area and it, it's only about a centimeter and that seems quite a lot push it down on there oh, can't, can't replicate it now i'm gonna have to come closer closer there it goes whoa whoa Okay, that's burnt some pretty interesting holes in the paper and also in the backing material that I have on my desk here. That was quite aggressive. That was 20 watts being dissipated over a very small distance though, but again, as I said, quite a violent reaction there. So let's try the two amps in this length. Am I getting it? Oh yeah, there we go. So yeah definitely getting two amps and they really need to change the range on this thing if we're going to be doing two amps but my fuse is gone so just be happy that we are pushing i hope i'm just blowing my fuse again probably that's how you blow a fuse now it's going and it's pushing two amps down there i can read it off the power supply 
let's see what point this stuff fails then. So two amps, two amps. Yeah, it really is conducting well. And we'll get to about here. And I, yeah, it's definitely doing a much better job than this nickel stuff. So bring it in and yeah, well, no fire being made. Yeah, that's good. And then this one, two amps. Oh, look at that, it's smoking straight away. So 20 watts at this point, look at it. Oh, do you see that? It kind of changed colour and then flashed and now there's nothing. Let's see if I can get a better picture of that happening. Well, I tried to go in there and get a slow motion of that thing burning out again, but it wouldn't actually go the same way that it went before. It was quite interesting because it almost kind of looked like you know, it had almost gone wet, possibly melted, I'm not sure, and then kind of instantly burnt. Yeah, it has kind of left some little flakes of metally looking stuff behind. So actually I'd say this one was the better performing one. This is the best one. And what one was that? This is the conductive. It is CW220STP. Uh, no one has sent me any of this stuff for free or uh, asked me to do this video. It is simply I wanted to find the best solution and I will be using this one in future. Now I've actually as you've seen, put 20 watts through here at, tw at 10 volts, 2 amps, no problem. Brought those probes right down together, uh, shorted the probes through that, and it's conducted really well. Uh, nice and dry. It does kind of leave a bit of a silver residue behind, but I'm, I'm really happy with that one there. So I'm going to write down their resistance per meter now. Now I'm going to rate uh, my favourite products here. Uh, it's going to be completely unfair because it's a bit unscientific. I should really have tested these again once they'd been heat cured or uh, left to dry more permanently. But because of uh, time and the fact I've destroyed them with some destructive testing, that's not really an option now. So where should I start? Well, I'm afraid I'm going to put this one here at uh, number four. Now, the reason why that one's at number four is while it's conductive, we've got some nice um, resistance there per metre. It does come out, for me anyway, at about, uh, what was that, 14 kilo ohms a metre. Now, that's fine if we're trying to send signals. I've seen people using this for like uh, little keyboards and for uh, sending signals to different chips like Arduino and Pickaxe. But for me, for actually sending some high power down to some LEDs, uh, possibly making functional circuits from it, I can't get it to work. Uh, it does dry nice, it's nice and robust, it's flexible, it doesn't break off. It's uh, quite a good price on this as well. And there's probably lots and lots of applications where this will be really useful. So it is a good product and it has made it uh, be far better than pencil. So number three, well, it's going to have to be this uh, nickel conductive one. So the nickel, it comes out at about 1.18 kilo ohms per meter. Again, it's not fair because to actually really work out its kilo ohms per uh, meter, I would need to know the cross-sectional size of the actual track I put down. And I've not taken that into consideration, so I tried to get them quite equal. This one is probably the thickest track uh, there, but you know, I would have to guess that this one was also quite a thick track, and I would say probably the best one was the thinnest, uh, which is this one. So now let's go in for number two. Number two is this uh, unknown conductive ink, um, I, I, well, conductive silver it's actually called. I don't think it's actually called an ink, I think it is actually particles of silver suspended in some sort of uh, resin or glue. And that is uh, what forms the the conductive layer. Certainly, when it flakes off, it flakes off in some very thin, like, metal wafers. So I think there's quite a lot of metal in that one. Uh, that one comes in at 80 ohms. Now, it's actually, no, not kilo ohms. I was going to do a kilo ohm sign there. 80 ohms a metre. Now, this is actually the best. This is the least uh, resistive or the best conducting version there. Uh, the only problem was that we saw 
Again, it fizzes away quite well when it was loaded up with current. It certainly failed. What I could have done was crank the currents up and seen at what current and what uh, power dissipation these fail. But certainly by 20 watts dissipation in a small length there, it uh, burnt up. Uh, pr probably if you're doing very low power, very low signal applications, this would probably be the best stuff because, you know, that little bit of resistance there makes all the difference. Now it's this standard one here, it just says conductive pen. Uh, I did throw the packet away long before making this video, so I've got no idea what it actually says. It says it's for industrial use only, and I probably shouldn't have it. There's lots of danger warning signs on there. It's from America, and it is labelled the CW. I'll write this down because if you want some simple conductive ink, I'd recommend this one. I'm not saying it's the best, it depends on your application, but certainly I put 20 watts through there, handled it no problem. Uh, it's got very low resistivity of 83 ohms a meter, which is quite nice. So it'd be quite nice to actually see if I can draw out some circuits with this particular pen, uh, send some power down them and light some LEDs. Uh, no doubt this one would light LEDs, this one would light LEDs, um, possibly this one, you know, maybe this doesn't work so well on paper. Uh, to do a fair test, I should have probably tried these on different materials, you know, uh, plastic, glass, maybe wood, all sorts of things with different amounts of absorbency because some of what might have happened here is the paper could absorb the, um, the, you know, the suspension fluids very quickly and not allow the particles to settle properly. So there we go, that's that, a bit basic, uh, maybe not the most scientific test and in no way should be taken as salt and pepper. And that sounds like I need to go.